A couple weeks ago, I was listening to the news, listening to a special report on people who work, all of those consumer helplines, you know, the 800 numbers you call when you need to know how to plug in your dryer or change your flight, you know, all I've used stuff. many. Oh, man. Apparently, these folks don't just have tough jobs. They work in what was being sort of revealed as highly abusive environments, harassment, pressure, lots of verbal abuse coming from customers. Another injustice being exposed, another cause to be upset about. But the problem is this, Alan, is that the day before, it was an entirely different report on another injustice or expose. And the day before that, it was a different one. Mm. And this sort of thing absolutely overwhelms the soul and it clouds our perspective on what's important, what's urgent, where is God working in the world? And we want to get perspectives. So welcome back, friends, to the Wild at Heart podcast. John and Alan here again this week in part two, picking up some of the basic practices of Christian spirituality for strength in, in a time that is, it's overwhelming. You know, you, you spend any time tapping into this injustice, this cause, this right. heartbreak, this outrage. And the, the message is this. The message is get upset. You really ought mm. to be upset about, you know, right. fill in the blank there. And I think that Jesus knew that we would be living through such times. And I think he gave us some really beautiful counsel, particularly in Matthew 24, you know, as things seem to be accelerating into some sort of climax, one of the first things he says about living through crazy times is simply don't freak out. You'll hear of wars and threats of wars, rumors of wars, but don't panic is Matthew 24, 6 in the New Living. And then the NASB says, see to it that you're not frightened. Mm. Like we have a choice. Yes. We have an active role in this. Jesus is unflappable, the most level-headed guy ever, right. right? Who refused yeah. to get baited into the drama of his day. And he's urging us to be unflappable as well. And Alan, I think the first step is mental resilience. Mm -hmm learning how to catch our thoughts, learning how to take hold of our attention. And we often don't realize how spun up we are until the emotions take over, the anger, the rage, the fear. Oh yeah. Right? Right. It, yeah, okay. So keep our heads, don't freak out. It, this advice is drilled into every form of military training. It, it's every part of those outdoor leadership schools. If you're going to compete at a high level athletically, you know, the counsel is, look, when things get hot, keep your head, mm -hmm. keep your cool, mm -hmm. right? Keep your perspective. So good. Yeah. And so I think um, what we wanted to pick up with here in part two this week is mental resilience by coming back to what what is your regular practice, friends, of being in the scriptures, being in the perspective of God. The story of God should get more of our attention time than any other media. That's just a really simple equation that'll kind of help you with your personal math. The story of God scriptures, other things, you know, good podcasts, Bible podcasts, good reading should get more of your attention time than any other media. So if you're spending 30 minutes a day, for example, consuming what's called the news, and this includes all social media, then you need to be spending more than 30 minutes, maybe twice as much in the scriptures or listening to good podcasts like this one, <laughs> or... Um, good reading material. In other words, perspective. We need to be saturating our perspective in the story of God and his heart, his character, his what he's doing in the world. 
And Alan, I know that you've been almost driven back to this. Right. This summer and, and into this fall, you, you've come back to the scriptures. Yeah. What, what drove you there? Well, I think it was really a desperation. It was a sense of, I know what's emptying me, but I was trying to find good things to fill me. And John, what I realized is, man, I, I'm a voracious reader. I mean, I will buy from Amazon or a local bookstore at least a couple of books a week. Whoa. And my my books by my nightstand are taller than my nightstand, you know, in a leaning tower right now, because there's just no way to read them that quickly. But these are all, you know, uh, books from C.S. Lewis or George MacDonald or classics, um, fiction, you know, but but life-giving works. But what I started to realize is I'm spending more time in that works about God or stories that have a, you know, Christian worldview, the Lord of the Rings or the Space Trilogy by C.S. Lewis. And, and yet I was spending less time comparatively than in the Word of God. And, and so I was being filled, but not in a way that I felt like could sustain me through the day. And to your point, spent far more time in social media and the news and updates and this and that than I did in just opening the Bible and just spending a little time in God's Word, letting that saturate me and fill my heart. So The thing is, you don't even have to be like a news junkie folks if you just if you just click on all the stuff people send you right like li- literally i'm completely unplugged from social media but i get tons and tons of texts from friends colleagues you know allies around the world saying hey did you see this well you got to click on this news report you know and because a friend has sent it because you know someone that i respect i could fill my day with that stuff between your email right and and you're texting, yeah. you know, people sending you, gosh, you really got to take a look at this. That's enough to capture my attention, get me spun up. Totally. Yeah. And and we get dopamine hits from that and the adrenaline and the sense of being current. But John, I found myself last Saturday just sitting and I had the house to myself and there were options of books and the news and social media and and instead, I just reached for scripture and spent probably an hour just soaking in it. And it wasn't a reading plan, and it wasn't what I would call a quiet time. It was very active with God. But I, it, it was the best thing for my heart that I had done in a long, long time. And it was just this, not a feeling of guilt or shame, but but a, an awakening almost of, man, w- why isn't this what I'm spending the most time doing daily for my heart? Yes. Instead of the last thing or, you know, one verse out of context that I find, you know, or have taped on my desk, but but really immersing. And so that's that's what I've just felt a new hunger for. And I feel like in these times, there's nothing better. The word of God is supernatural. It yes. is. It, it its ability to speak to us, but also to nourish mm. and free and deliver and heal and truly provide mental resilience is, is, is supernatural. It's, it's just extraordinary because it is God-breathed, yeah. and God breathes through it as we engage it. It's a living text. And like you, I also, this summer, was looking for things to strengthen me. And I've got my go-to, you know, my walks, take the dogs for a walk in the early morning right at dawn. Mm-hmm. You know, I have, I have things I do, my bedtime prayers, yes, the daily prayer, which we talked about last week, and music, worship, but it, I was looking for more. And so for me, what I picked up was the Psalms. Mm-hmm. And this summer, and I was reading three psalms a day, limiting myself to that, yeah. spending time in them, pen out, marking up my Bible, highlighting things, putting brackets around, you know, exclamation points, stuff like that. I would love to hear what you've been in 
-hmm. and what's been nourishing you? Yeah, well, one of the things I was in over the weekend was Colossians. And you're talking about perspective. And to me, this is so, I'm going to read you something I was reading. It's Colossians 1, 15 through 20. But what's so powerful to me, John, is just the shift I feel in myself, in my inner being, as I read these words. This is the message translation, but it's called Christ Holds It All Together. And start at verse 15. We look at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. So friends, just notice your reaction hearing that. <laughs> like I I'm actually kind of stunned really it is a voice from another world I mean it, it it's like wait wow thank you for the reminder that Jesus sustains everything that like he is literally holding the universe together Yes. How did that how did that meet you this weekend? Well, it brought tears to my eyes. I felt my heart go to a different level of beating. It slowed down, it calmed down. Because John, yeah, we, you look at the world and everything everywhere that mm -hmm. any conversation nowadays seems heated. There's one side or the other. Things are falling apart, things are amping up. It feels like an accelerator. You know, we're on this conveyor belt that goes faster and faster and faster. And this was a reality check, a breath of fresh air for mm. me that, oh, yeah, mm. Jesus holds everything together from beginning to end. You know, he talks about all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe from people to things, animals to atoms, like they get properly fixed and fit together. That promise, that assurance grounds me, and it's like I step out of the matrix that I'm stuck in, and I'm good again. Yeah, that was so beautiful, simply to hear you read from the first chapter of Colossians. It's just extraordinary, particularly the reminder of the supremacy of Jesus. He really is Lord. He really is reigning over all things. And what we thought we would do this week for your strengthening, friends, is just read. Read some scriptures that we have been enjoying. So let me read Psalm 5 from the New Living Translation. Oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning, I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Therefore, the proud may not stand in your presence, for you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. I will worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me 
in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. My enemies cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. Oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. And then he ends with this, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Wow. <laughs> Listening to that, I'm, I'm both reminded of God's hatred of evil um, and how he is not only going to make things right, but that we should be expectant for that. We should wake mm -hmm. up in the morning expecting that. He hears our voice. He, he, he understands the brokenness around us, and he's determined to make it right. And I mean, John, he could have been reading, that could have been written last week. Exactly. That's how God met me. I, I wasn't expecting that, but it was like, oh my gosh, that this is it. You know, the deception in the world, the evil, the grasp for power and control and the rebellion, just the flat out arrogant rebellion against God. And that's what has a lot of people spun up. It's, it, it is the injustice, but it's the injustice of the rebellion against God and the, and the flagrant, you know, okay, so here's, this is one of those texts that I clicked on, you know, a friend of mine sends me the news report the other day that Scotland recently passed some sort of law that children starting at four years old can change their gender without their parents' consent. And, and you're like, wait, wait, what, what are you even talking about? I mean, a four-year-old doesn't even have concept of this yet. And who is helping them do this? Right. Right? Because they, right. they would need some adult involved in their life that's, you know, coaching them and leading them down that path in order to, you know, need a law to do it against their parents' guidance. And you just go, wait, wait, wait. Mm. Okay, folks, let's not get lost on that particular news detail. The point is... The world is jacked, and it was and it was in the time that David wrote Psalm five, and he's crying out for God, and and I'm finding such comfort here in the Psalms. What else has been speaking to you, Alan? Yeah, John, Ephesians two, and one of the things that's been helpful for me is not staying in one translation, just to hear the nuances. So. The NIV, you know, is great. Um, the message, um, I just got a Bible a few weeks ago called the First Nations Version, which is an indigenous translation of the New Testament. So it's all about the creator God, and, and, and it's a beautiful way to just hear in fresh ways. But I'm going to read to you Ephesians 2 from the Passion Translation, and it's just the beginning of chapter 2. And his fullness fills you, even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of the self-life. We live by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children, subject to God's wrath like everyone else. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority 
of the heavenly realm, for we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Throughout the coming ages, we will be the visible display of the infinite riches of his grace and kindness, which was showered upon us in Jesus Christ. For by grace, you have been saved by faith. Nothing you ever did could earn this salvation, for it was a love gift from God that brought us to Christ. So no one will ever be able to boast, for salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. We have become his poetry a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Again, listeners, just notice your body right now. Notice your soul simply hearing truth, perspective, I can, I can feel my mind coming out of the world. I can feel mental resilience coming to me just hearing you read that. Well, and John, yeah, the, the, me too. In the first sentence, and his fullness fills you. You know, I was talking to you about the emptiness that I just had. My tank is low at the end of a day. And to know, right, and it needs to be filled with his fullness. And, and just this whole idea of we have become his poetry or a recreated people that he has given us before we were born a destiny and invites us into that with him. Like, I, I'm good. You know, I read that and I've got a full tank for the next however long because it's a reorienting back to what's true, what's real. Alan, it's also a rescue from all those feelings that God is not intervening, that he's not coming through, that mm -hmm. he's, he, yeah. you know, the world has gone mad, but also our own personal lives. It, it can feel like God is not working on our behalf. And when you read that and Colossians and Psalm 5, you, you know, what we're being reminded of is all that God has already done on our behalf before we were even born. Yes. The intervention, the provision that we can now tap into, it's just such a fresh perspective on, hang on, God, forgive me. You have intervened massively for me, and I needed to be reminded of that. So, John, what's another psalm that you've been in lately? Well, I was flipping through this morning looking for the ones that I had marked up quite a bit. Let me read Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple, for he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock, and then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray. O oh Lord, be merciful and answer me. My heart heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, because I am confident. I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave 
and courageous, yes, wait patiently for the Lord. You know, John, as you read that, I, what I was thinking is, I love his conversational, raw, honest intimacy with God. Like, it makes me realize I need to be more vulnerable with God in terms of when I'm asking him, talking to him, pleading with him, unsure of what's going on. Like, he just goes in, and it's it's not a... God bless me today or God be with me. I mean, it's it's this is going on and this is going on and where are you and what about this and oh yeah, you're always here and and so it, it was very in a beautiful way convicting to me of that's the kind of man I want to be in my language with God. Yes. Yeah. I'm cracking up the, this morning as we're recording this. I I feel like we are reaching into another universe as we read these the perspective the rescue and the grace it brings just to have the word of god read over your life i'm looking over the psalms um that i've been reading through and the number of verses that are underlined, the number of sections that I've put big brackets around, exclamation points, little hearts. and um, The scriptures are so nourishing, friends. They're so life-saving. They really do strengthen your spirit and they strengthen your soul. And listening today, I'm, I'm recovering a mental resilience I need. And so let me give a couple shout outs here Um, Our friend Brian Harden does a daily audio Bible podcast where he reads scripture. He's reading through the whole Bible. It's the Bible in a year kind of a project. And so you'll get some of the Old Testament, some of the New Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, um, just to hear the scripture read to you. So you've got to commute, you know, you're in your car. What a Mm. great way. Instead of getting on the news, let someone read to you. We also love the Bible Project podcast, Tim Mackey, John Collins out of Portland. Those guys are really solid, and and their their podcast is excellent. There's tons. There's tons we could name. Um, The Naked Bible, Michael Heiser. There's there's a lot of good Bible podcasts out there. But the point being, as you're thinking about your spiritual practices this Mm -hmm. fall, as you're thinking about prayer, and morning, noon, and night, like Daniel, as you're thinking about the mental resilience that the scripture can provide, make some room, make some room in your life to get back into the scriptures on a daily basis and just let it do its good thing in you. 